I have six children. And ironically, I always knew that, uh, I didn't know my son would become an ophthalmologist. I have several other children who are physicians. My wife's an anesthesiologist. Two of my children are anesthesiologists. But somehow I always knew my son would be the guy I'd have to work with. And my son is, uh, how can I say this? He is the, uh, he is the leader of the pack in my family. I know what induced me to become an ophthalmologist. When I was 11 years old, they took one of my father's eyes out. And, uh, and I used to go with him sometimes to see his doctor, who was a world-famous doctor in Philadelphia. And it just impressed me <laughs> how, how all the young doctors seemed to hold him in such high esteem. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to be that guy. I'm not sure I became as famous as him. My father had a seventh grade education. You know, he was a son of immigrants, very poor people. And he um, had a very difficult childhood. And the thing that was interesting, he, <laughs> he had a false eye and false teeth. And he would put his false eye and false teeth in a cup at night. I kept telling him, don't do that. But of course, you know, I'm just his son. So he ignored me. And sure enough, he got an infected orbit, <laughs> and we had to take his, uh, his implant out. And that was, that was, <laughs> I didn't want to tell him, I told you, because he was a lovely man, and I didn't want to make him feel bad. So. My mother was a very high-strung woman, and she worried her whole life about uh, that something would happen to my father's good eye. Thank God it never did. And... Uh, it's it's interesting. It's 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 you know I've my problem in medical school, if you wanted to call it a problem, was not to decide to mostly decide. I mean, a lot of specialties appealed to me. So uh, I could have done in any one of a number, I think, and I, and I would have enjoyed it. But this is the most. I mean, this is a very rewarding specialty. You, you're probably not aware of this. Of all the specialties in medicine, and there are a great many of them, there is probably no specialty that goes on in families like ophthalmology. Maybe a couple others, maybe dermatology and orthopedic surgery. But I mean, there are a lot of ophthalmologists that go back three generations. There's one right in this county that's, uh, that's, that's gone for three generations. And some of them even go back to Europe. That's a darn good question. I would say get as much training as you can because it's become so much more complicated. And it's hard, I mean, you know, when I was starting out, you know, you went to college, you went four years to medical school, a year internship, three years of uh, residency. And nowadays, some guys still come out after three years of residency, but I think I think there's so much to learn. If you can get a fellowship, a good fellowship, that will stand you in good stead. I honestly have thought that a year's fellow, being a fellow with a in a in a busy practice, will probably equivalent to ten years in the beginning of your practice, because it's it's slow in the beginning. Although the one nice thing for me is it wasn't as competitive when I started. People ask me why I keep working at my age, and one of the reasons is I enjoy the people I work with. And I enjoy the people who I work, I work with and the people I work for. Um, I mean, they all say to me, not all, but a lot of them say to me, you're not retiring, are you? And it's very gratifying to have somebody say that. And as a matter of fact, I had one patient who actually came, I'm from Philadelphia, and one patient who came from my neighborhood in Philadelphia, and then he, he was in this area, and then he moved over to Virginia. And he, he always used to ask, I used to see him about every six months or a year, and he always used to say, he asked me when I was retired, he says, because I'm not coming this far to see your son.
years, a lot of people have said to me, you know, I've been seeing you for probably 40 years. And uh, the nice thing about ophthalmology is, it, uh, you know, I have a younger brother who's a retired plastic surgeon. And when, once he said to me, how can you stand dealing with all those old people? And made me think for a few minutes, and then I said, realized, I said, you know, I really love it. I said, you know, the, I don't know if the young people appreciate all the time what you do for them, but the old people do, especially if you restore their sight. <laughs> they really appreciate it. <laughs> That's a good question. Because I constantly get surprised, okay? Um, I always think to myself, well, that, they're not going to be able to solve it. We're not going to be able to solve that problem. But then again, we may not solve it, but we definitely can improve it. I think the, the thing that'll be interesting is, is when people are truly blind, I think, I don't know if it'll be in my lifetime, but they're, they'll, they'll have a device that they can put in your eye that may not restore normal vision, which will give them so they won't have to use a white cane. So, uh, you know, it's, so I think, I think, but you know, you never know. And the, the stuff that goes on today is mind boggling. I mean, there's so many, I mean, we, when I was first started, we'd keep a patient in the hospital for a week after we did a cataract, and nowadays they're out in two hours. Well, I think that's very helpful because people, <laughs> you know, you're not a fly-by-night guy, that you've been here for 40 or 50 years. You know, they, they have confidence in you. And some, I often say to people, you know, they ask me, especially new patients, they, they look at me and I say, well, I, have you seen this before? Yeah, I've seen it before, many times. <laughs> well, my dad was an interesting guy, very, very nice man and a very humble man. And people have said that to me in the past and I always say, well, to tell you the truth, my father had two sons and I think if we would have pumped gas for a living, he'd have been proud of us as long as we were decent human beings. And, you know, I think my mother was the kind of person who would brag about her sons, about being doctors, but he wasn't that kind of man. He was very modest. And, uh, and as long as we were decent human beings, he would have been pleased with us. You know, I like to be with my grandchildren and my children. I have nine grandchildren, so I want to spend as much time with them. I never, I only knew one of my grandparents, and I'm, you know, I'm a firm believer that uh, grandparents and grandchildren uh, have a lot in common. They have a common enemy, so. And I enjoy it.